Dana with Relapse. I'm the inventor of the Bee Bender, and you're watching What's the Deal with Spiel. <laughs> Hold on. There. The light's on now. All the talk today is about this. The Relapse Bee Bender. <laughs> Relapse Bee Bender. It is made by Dana Valley from California. Another small business. And he came up with this idea to make an easy to install version of the Parsons White Bee Bender. At the end of this segment, I'm going to put my demo video I made for CB Giddy. Simply put, a bee bender takes one string and raises it up so it sounds like a steel guitar. Two of the other strings stay the same, but the high one goes up. Giddy sent me this to demo and I tried all different things. I even bought a lap steel guitar I have sitting here. There's a string missing because that's where I had this originally installed in here. Let me show you the demo video I made from that. As you can see, I suck at playing lap steel. Um, I did my best. I tuned it to a C6 tuning to get the Nashville sound and was trying my best, but man, it just, I have a tough time playing lap steel. Uh, it's just not my thing. So I went looking through all my guitars and found my exit sign guitar, which has a CB Giddy hardtail bridge, and it is a top loading bridge, which means the strings go in through the back here. Well, that's all you need for one of these B benders. The string goes through the B bender and into the saddle here and whenever you push down it stretches it you'll see it in the demo at the end so i had to go through buying a lap steel installing it on a lap steel trying to learn how to play that and making that quick little demo and then going through all my guitars putting this on one of my guitars and learning how to play this in doing so i actually came up with a new tuning i talk about it a little in the demo video but let me show it to you it is this a the second string is a c sharp but for the high string i needed to make it so it would bend and sound right and after messing around with a few different things i came up with a b so when you bend it that b goes to a c sharp which is the middle string so it matches it it's one octave higher, and I'm not getting it right. And you, it takes a while get, getting used to this bending so that you bend it a perfect step up. So in order to make a demo, I had to come up with some music as well. I started out using a slide. Actually, check that out. It's a Rocky Mountain Shane Spill signature. You know where to get it. It's kind of cool with the slide. Maybe if I had a four string cigar box guitar or a five string cigar box guitar, um, a slide would sound even better. But then I came up with this lick that's in the demo. idea what I'm playing. I don't know what chords I'm playing. Whenever I come up with a new tuning on, on a cigar box guitar, and listen, you guys need to hear this. When I come up with a new tuning, all I do is start putting my fingers different places on the fretboard and stumble around to see what sounds good. And for this, I started with... Ooh, that was cool. I don't know. It's, it's like some A chord. When I push on this, it makes it sound even cooler. And then here, and then to a minor. And as I move down to here, I'm still keeping the bender pushed down and 
Let it go. When's the last time you tried a new tuning on your cigar box guitar? Try different things. See what sounds good to you. And uh, maybe come up with a new song. Here's that demo video. <laughs> Here's how to install a Relapse B-Bender onto a cigar box guitar loaded with a CB Giddy hardtail bridge. My test instrument is a three-string cigar box guitar with a body made from an old exit sign. It proved to be the perfect instrument to mount the new B-Bender on it. The guitar was made by Gary DeRosiers back in 2017. Now the instructions for the Relapse are for lap steel guitar but this is pretty much the same thing for a CB Giddy hardtail bridge and we're going to have a little bit of fun with this. Now what you're going to need is a hardtail bridge that is top loading which means the strings get loaded into the back end of the bridge here. As you can see I'm using a little allen wrench. That's where the strings go. The strings do not get fed from the bottom of the guitar. They have to go in the side for this thing to work. All you need is a screwdriver to install the Relapse B-Bender. Now for me, I'm using an electric screwdriver to make this go fast. You're going to start out by choosing which string saddle your B-Bender is going to be used on. And for this one, it's the high saddle, and I've removed it there. Here's the B-Bender unit. I've already put the bender lever onto the bender bracket, the back part, and I've installed the little saddle screw in the very end. That saddle screw goes in the back of the hardtail bridge, just like we removed the black one that was originally on there. Now the B-Bender comes with a roller saddle, so we use that as a replacement. I put the spring in the saddle screw, and then I get the roller saddle and install it. Now I'm going to fast forward the video here because it's a little tricky to get that saddle in there. Let's get that done. success and you can watch and see how this device works as you push it down the saddle pulls back once you're done with that make sure to get a small allen wrench and set the saddle height adjustment screws to the saddle you want to take them about the same level as the other saddles on your guitar and once you have strings on you can get that height just right at this point in the game, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to string this guitar. Now, I want this B-Bender to sound like a steel guitar, so I went through a few different ideas, and I came up with this tuning of A, C-sharp, and B. Um, I'm not really sure what the chord is or what I'm trying to play, however it works. So the strings I chose were a .046 for the A, the middle string was a .032 for the C-sharp, and the high string was a .016 for the B. Because this is a top-loading hardtail bridge, the strings go in the back, over the saddles, and up to the tuners. Now let me show you what I did with the B-Bender. The B-Bender has a hole in the back of it where the string is fed through. See right there. And you feed your string through that hole, and also through the hole of the hardtail bridge. And then get it to feed up through the saddle. It can be a little tricky and you may need to bend that string a little so it points upward. But once you get that, get that string fed through and then you tune it up. Ha! There we go. Thank goodness. All right, I'm going to take those strings, put them up on the tuners. I won't do that on camera. But again, look at this. This is how it works. You push down on the B-Bender, and it pulls back on that string, creating more string tension and raising up the note up to a full step. You'll see it in the next demonstration as I play this for you. Let's do it. So here we are. The strings are on. I've got the B-Bender ready to go. I even turned the light on on my exit sign guitar.
before I forget, I want to show you. In my demo video, my guitar swells like a steel guitar. I am using a crescendo pedal. And what this pedal does is it acts like a volume pedal. If you press it on and play a note, it goes wow. So it kills the attack. Off, my guitar sounds like this. On, it sounds like this. And one of the things about steel guitar is that swell. So when I put the crescendo pedal on, it gives me that. You can also do the same thing with a volume pedal. But I got the crescendo because I really like Phil Kagi and what he would do with volume knob swells. And there's times when I just want to be able to play those swells in a lead and not have to worry about stomping on a volume pedal. The crescendo is one of those one trick pony pedals, but it's a cool trick. <laughs> What's the deal with Shane's bookshelf? Well, as you can see, things have changed. Uh, in my last video, I said I was getting rid of my CD collection because I listen to streaming music pretty much full time now. And so my CD cases are gone. I have some of my crazy instruments up here in the background. What do you think? I got two new books this week and I've already devoured them. Uh, first off is this one, The Hidden History of Mississippi Blues by Roger Stoley. Roger Stoley was an advertising executive who left his job, moved to Mississippi, and started the Cathead Blues Music Books and Art Store. It's down in Clarksdale, Mississippi. And this is his interviews with a lot of great Mississippi blues guys, including a fantastic one with Honey Boy Edwards. Honey Boy Edwards was with Robert Johnson when he died. Um, just a great book all around. Hidden History of Mississippi Blues, cathead.biz. I also got this from cathead.biz. Guys, this, this, hold on. Another Ed Stilly. This guy is another Ed Stilly. The book is called Hanging Tree Guitars by Freeman Vines. Freeman Vines makes his own electric guitars, and he has been searching for a tone that he heard in a gospel guitarist back in the 50s. And the tone hit him so hard that for the rest of his life, he's been building his own guitars, searching for that tone. And his designs are truly unique. Fantastic designs, crazy shapes, everything else. Now, this book is an art piece in and of itself. All the photos were done with a tintype camera by Timothy Duffy. And they spend a lot of time talking about four instruments that Freeman made from a tree that was cut down. That tree was used to lynch people in the deep south. Um, so there's a lot of talk of social justice and things in this book. For me, what I got out of this book is Freeman Vines is one of those Ed Stilly type people. Yes, the, the hanging tree guitars are haunting to think about. It shows a lot of his other guitars that he's built in there and he uses different ways of chambering the inside of the guitars. His sense of of resonance with wood is his own in his own universe i could keep talking about this but serious just go buy this book he's another ed stilly um and he's still alive he's somebody i want to meet i want to talk to i want to ask questions i want to hear his guitars and it would be a dream to even play one so hanging tree guitars uh, Freeman Vines, get this book. That's what the dealio with Shane's bookshelf. Mm -hmm.